Good morning, and thank you so much for joining um, Hagerstown Community College's Women's Growth Workshop in partnership with Ms. Tina Fraley and Fit Minded Living. My name is Jennifer Wilkes, and I am the Allied Health and Health and Wellness Program Manager here at Hagerstown Community College, and I could not be more thrilled um, well, possibly I could be. I would be more thrilled if we were able to be together in person, but um, we have to make do with the current situation we're in, so I'm just so grateful that we can be together in this virtual platform this morning. I don't know about you, but I'm a little tired this morning, so I hope you all have your coffee ready and um, are in some comfy clothes and are just sitting back and ready to take in a morning full of wisdom, um, at looking at your career, um, and really what you want to do um, as we go through uh, this pandemic and then coming out of it. Um, this is a third workshop, um, or I'm sorry, this is the second workshop in our series, and we will have a third workshop in September, and we'll talk more about that as we um, go through the morning. Um, but uh, wanted to just launch into what you can expect for the morning. Um, we have four fantastic presenters this morning, and although they have um, pre-recorded their, um, their, their talks, uh, we will all be together live at the end for a panel discussion. So as you are going through their talks, um, please take notes, um, ask questions. You can use the Q&A feature um, on this um, on the webinar in order to post your questions. I will be jotting down those questions and we will be asking them as a group. Some of the questions your presenter might be able to go ahead and answer in real time and reply back to it. Um, some of them we will be holding though for the panel discussion. You also um, received a, um, a workbook uh, when you um, got your link for how to get in here and please have that with you because it has all kinds of um, tools to help you navigate and jot notes and do some reflection as we spend our morning together but even afterwards um, how do you take some of those tools and implement them afterwards your panelists i can't say um, enough about them and we have everything um, for you this morning from the tools for launching your career or investigating next career steps to finding your why, your passion for what you're doing, your values, um, and how does that mesh with your career. And I don't want to forget that um, we also tackle all of those things we tell ourselves that get in our way. And let's face it, ladies, we can get in our own way. Sometimes we're we are our own worst enemy. And so you're going to hear some fantastic feedback and guidance on how to, how to push through that and uh, really change that script and narrative. Wanted to go through just a few housekeeping points for you. Um, so we will have a break halfway through. So um, for those of you who are keeping score, that'll be after Andy Overton's message. Um, we'll have a 10 minute break. So from now, through your first two speakers, you're with us, you're drinking your coffee, you're taking um, notes, you're um, using the Q&A feature, then we'll have a 10 minute break and um, everybody can get some more coffee if you need it, go to the restroom and come on back with us. And again, just don't forget to do your, um, your Q&A. And Tina Fraley will be the one who will do a brief introduction to all of the different present um, presentations. So um, you won't go in cold, you'll kind of know what to expect and, and buckle in because you're in for a great ride. All right, and without further ado, I want to introduce Tina Fraley, who is the visionary behind the Women's Growth Series. Tina is a certified personal trainer. She's master's level trained counselor and the owner of Fit Minded Living. Her own personal brand was inspired by her own health journey when she lost 150 pounds. Can you imagine that? 150 pounds through diet and exercise. This transformation for Tina um, was both a personal and a professional one, and it's really fueled her, her passion to bring women's lives into alignment using a holistic perspective that encompasses mind, your body, your career, and let's face it, just simply life, everything that gets thrown at us. 
Her passion and dedication to empower women to achieve her own goals is evident in every aspect of her life. It is my great pleasure to present to you, Miss Tina Fraley. Thank you so much, Jen. I freaking love you, woman. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. All on point, the organizational guru behind most of this. And Jenna, I can't see you, but I know you are there as well. And you have been made just such an incredible way of bringing all of this together. Ladies, thank you so much for being here this morning. I know that every single one of us is here for a specific different reason. But what I want to do is remind us of our universal desire and tenacity to grow. We all have different experiences, different backgrounds, and I brought these workshops together with the help of Hagerstown Community College and all of the presenters that you're gonna to meet today for one very, very deep core purpose. Our purpose in life is to grow. From wherever we are, the roots that we place in the soil that we have, we can grow together, we can rise together, we can change our lives together. And that is what you're gonna get an inside perspective of today. Each of the presenters today comes from different walks in life, but their mission in life is to grow. And they're bringing that collective knowledge together right now for you to be able to take from it. What I wanna ask you to do right now is to listen with your heart, with your mind, with all of your body, your body included too. We have all of these different ways to be able to take in life. And what I'm asking you this morning is to remember that together we can rise and we can reach new heights, new dreams, new visions. Each of us is here with that different specific goal, with that different, aha, I'm reaching for something in life right now. I want you to think about who you're here to, to find, who you're here to discover in the mirror, not just in the women that you're getting the opportunity to meet today, but who are you here to have resonate with you? Sorry, my nerves are kicking in now too. <laughs> I've traveled the country going to all of these different workshops, all of these different leaderships and mentor programs, trying to find and connect and bridge that gap. And what I came away from every time is I wanted that right where I was. I wanted that in my backyard. I wanted that for my daughters. I wanted that for my sons and my sisters. And here today, this morning, you're getting an inside opportunity to be a part of that new level, that new standard, that new taking it to the next height in your career professionally and personally. Our first presenter coming up, Laura Wallace, it is absolutely my pleasure to be able to introduce you to this incredible soul in life. She is going to be able to just take you on a journey. The power walk that you're about to go on, the pivots that you're about to make, Take that pen, take that paper, your cup of coffee, open your ears, open your heart, and open your mind, and look for the message that you're about to receive. Without further ado, Laura Wallace. Hey, hey, welcome to Power in the Pivot. Welcome, you gutsy ladies. I am super excited to be here with you today. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Laura Wallace, also known as Laura Aura. I'm a branding and mindset coach for female entrepreneurs, CEO of Works & Co, which is an urban branding studio, and the hostess of the Gutsy Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about the power in the pivot. I want to share a story with you about how I went from completely exhausted, anxious, and consumed by fear to having a peaceful, thriving life in business. And I want to teach you how you can take your power back by pivoting in your own life. So the word power has a lot of different meanings. I'm gonna share with you with what in my tribe, in my world, what power actually means. Power is showing up as yourself unapologetically. It's making decisions that support your life. It's saying no to things that completely drain you. It's doing hard things to protect your inner peace. And it's speaking up and asking for help when you need it. And pivoting, if you're a Friends fan, we all have a meaning for the word pivot, but in this sense, pivoting is making a change and then deciding to act on it. It's implementing that change, regardless of how radical it seems to the people in your life. It's learning to listen and follow your gut, your inner intuition, your inner guide. 
It's doing something big or something small, and it's committing to the higher good. When you silence your power, you're giving it away to people, circumstances, places, and things. Giving away your power causes ongoing stress and anxiety, the stuff that keeps you up all night. It leaves you feeling empty and drained. It causes you to not really feel like yourself. It puts you in a reactive state versus proactive. It steals your joy, your happiness, your peace, and it stops you from doing the things that you love to do. Most of all, it's costing you. It's costing you time, it's costing you joy, and it's costing you money. Now fear. Fear loves to come along. Fear loves to pop in and be like, hey, I'm here to protect you. Let's, let's not do that because that's an unknown space. But what fear does is it shows up to try and stop you from doing the things that it's just not familiar with. So fear shows up when the outcome is unknown, when you're doing something new. It causes you to worry about how it's going to affect other people. Can I get an amen on that? It causes you to think that you can't do something or that you're not worthy of doing it in the first place. It tells you, hey, this is too big, so we're just gonna shut down and not do this. It tells you, you know what? We already know what we're doing, so it's easier to just kind of deal with things, right? And I've already, I've already known this. Like, this is what I've known my entire life, so why would I change it now? Listen, <laughs> I was there. And I'm gonna tell you about this crazy pivot story that has, is just so new and so fresh in my life, but I feel so empowered to come here and share this with you today, mostly because I believe in you. Before COVID, before COVID, after COVID, COVID in general, I was in a constant state of stress. I mean, constant. My health was declining on the daily. I was always in fight mode, right? Like I was always, getting up every day and being like, okay, which battle do I have to fight today? Who do I have to go after today? Who, what do I have to protect today? I felt empty, I felt desperate, I couldn't sleep. I was always worrying, you know, that like two o'clock in the morning when you sit straight up and you're like, ah, oh, all the things. Here, I also felt really defeated and just completely unhappy. My business on the outside looked like it was thriving and it parts of it, it absolutely was, but guess what was not thriving? I wasn't thriving. I was falling apart on a daily basis. I started to isolate myself from family events. Like I just don't have the time or capacity or energy to go hang out with people and smile and do things. No, it became easier to just retreat to my couch. My business, was falling apart in so many aspects. It was like throwing wet sand into the sky and wondering how on earth am I gonna catch it as it's falling down. I began to resent the very thing that I spent my entire life creating. My debt, tornado, completely uncontrollable. I almost lost my house, twice. I let down my team, the people that were on the front lines with me, and quite honestly, I was ready to give up. Then COVID, <laughs> amongst so many rapid changes in so many people's lives across the entire universe, might I add, I was starting to be faced with like a really harsh reality. Look, again, my business was already financially struggling. I know firsthand from being in the branding and marketing industry for over 20 years, that branding and marketing is always the first thing to be cut from budgets when money gets tight. I did not have a reserve and I could not continue to put my family and my team through the uncertainty that we had been carrying. Look, I was maxed out in every capacity and I was sacrificing my life in fear of making change. Change is hard. And that fear, oh yeah, she was loud and clear. This was a moment though that I had to pivot to take my power back. I had given my power away in every circumstance that you could possibly imagine. This time, it was different. I knew that to salvage any ounce of anything that I had built over the last 13 years, I had to make a change. I had to control what I could control because heaven knows everything was out of control at that moment. I had to save my family and I had to save my home, something that I worked really, really hard to get. I had to make the decisions that I had been kind of slightly pondering those little voices in the back of your head where it's like little whispers like, hey, what if, hey, what if? 
Yeah, I had to start answering those overnight. I had to do hard things for the sake of a higher good and to protect myself, my own energy, and my family. So on March 18th, I laid off my entire team. It was an excruciating decision, but it was one that had to be made to protect everyone in the company. I packed up my, all of my stuff that I needed, my, my iMac, all my papers, all my special pens that I write in my planner with because everyone knows you have to have that special pen with you. And I moved it all into my basement office in my home. I called every single one of my clients and said, hey, this is what's going on. How are you? What can I do to support you? I called every single person, company, or situation that I owed money to. And I was like, this is what's going on. I need balances. I need to know this. How can I work with you? What programs are you offering? Just facing, 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 facing. I also cried like a child on multiple occasions and I worked my rear end off. The dust started to settle. The heightenedness of the, the hard pivot of the world and then the hard pivot in my own life started to calm down. And then all of a sudden I started hearing this little voice that was super familiar to me. And she said, what does Laura want? What does Laura want to do in this next chapter? Because even though a lot of these things seem terrible and hard and ugly and bleh, there's so much opportunity in this. I decided to invest my time and energy into all the things that had been calling me for so long, so long. I decided to answer her. I wanted to step into my personal brand as a business coach and a speaker. I wanted to create passive income. All these things have been calling me. I wanted to have more freedom in my life, my finances, in my work. And honestly, I just wanted to feel happy and fulfilled again. So in a three month time frame, I pivoted back, but in a completely different direction. In the direction that the little Laura inside me said, hey, what if we go play this direction? What if we take our power back in our own happiness? So in a three month time span, I launched my personal brand, LauraAura.com. I created digital products and services to create passive income, something that I'd been wanting to do for well over a decade. I am working with selective branding clients that I absolutely adore working with, quality over quantity this time. I paid off all of my lingering home debt all those little credit card here and I owe this person there and all these little odds and ends that were just consuming our home finances. I paid them all off. All of our past two bills, completely current. And probably one of the biggest ones is I decreased my monthly business expenses by over $20,000. You can see where a lot of pressure comes in to perform, to achieve something like that. I gotta tell you, this is why I feel so passionate about taking your power back by pivoting. Because now, today, I feel peaceful and happy. I am excited about my life and my business again. I'm way more at ease. I'm more present when I'm in the room with the people that I love. I'm laughing and I have fun again. And I'm motivated to continue going. Most of all, Laura, both today Laura and little Laura, are happy. They're reconnected. That's who Laura Aura is. I want to empower you today to take your power back by pivoting. I know that these are hard decisions. I know that making a change is not easy. I know that the, the what ifs and the what if they say and how are they gonna think and how is this gonna affect everyone else? We give so much power away to what everyone else wants for our own lives and we stop thinking about what do I want? You got a handy dandy worksheet with this session today and I want you to pull it out. And I'm gonna go through these. These are five areas of your life that you can start to take your power back. But the number one rule that I wanna set for you is this, one at a time. It's easy to look at this worksheet and be like, I have to flip everything over. I have to change my entire life. I have to pack my suitcase and move to another country. And no, <laughs> unless that's what's calling you and then by golly, Let's pack that suitcase. But in day-to-day -day life, it's taking power back in one area at a time and then doing that and then doing it again and again and again. 
before you know it, you're going to start realizing like, oh my gosh, I made something so huge in my head that I stopped myself from achieving. This is where you get to take your power back, my love. So we're going to start with taking your power back in your voice. On your sheet, there is a large square, and I want you to write down all the times that you say yes when you actually want to say no. For instance, hey, you're so good at this. Will you join my committee? Hey, I know that you love to make this. Will you make that for me? Hey, I'm a client and I want your services. Will you take me on? Will you do this for me? Will you come there? Will you give me your time? There are so many times and places where people want to pull and extract your energy and you're saying yes way more than you should be. It's easy, right? We want to help people, we want to guide people, but here's the first things first. You have to protect your energy. You have to understand and know your worth. I want you to go through and write down all the times that you're like, well, why did I do that? <laughs> why did I say I would go there? Why am I doing this? Why am I giving away my time and my services? Why did I make those promises when I knew in my gut and in my intuition I should have said no. And then what I want you to do is I want you to star the top one, the one that probably like irks your insides the most. And I want you to take your power back. The next time that is asked, I want you to answer differently. I want you to step into what your gut is telling you to do. And no is a complete sentence. You don't owe time. You don't owe excuses. You don't owe an explanation to anything. It's okay to say no because it doesn't align with you. Maybe you just literally don't have time. Maybe it doesn't align with your goals. Maybe it's just not a good space in your life and your business. It is okay to say no. Next, I want to encourage you to take your power back by really evaluating what channels and where all of your energy is going. So on your worksheet, you have a left side and a right side. On the left side, I want you to write down all of the things that drain your energy, whether these are activities, Maybe these are services within your business. These are promises that you've made, places that you go, people that are in your life. Where are you feeling depleted? Where are you saying, oh gosh, if I just didn't have to blank, if I just didn't have to go blank, if I didn't have to hang out with blank, people are hard and it's okay to protect your energy from those people. On the right side, I want you to dream with me. I want you to play with me in the space of what if. What are all the things that you wish that you had more time to do? What are all the things that you love doing that fill your tank, raise your energy, and you're like, ah, if I could do this all the time, I absolutely would. I want you to really look at those two different columns. Evaluate which side is heavier. If you've got more on the left, what can be added to the right? And most importantly, what can be eliminated? That's where the power back and the energy really comes from, is, is the awareness. When you are aware of all of the different cracks in the windows where your energy is sliding out the side door, then you can start saying, ha, huh, I see that again, and I recognize that I'm doing that again. How can I respond differently in this moment? Okay, on the back side of your sheet is number three. This is where you get to take your power back in your finances. This is the very first step that I took to be able to pay off my home debt and to reduce my monthly expenses at works by $20,000. It comes with facing your finances. I know, I know it's hard and it's sticky and it's easier set. If it's out of sight, out of mind, you don't have to deal with it. Or if you just don't answer that call, then you don't have to deal with it. Or if you just leave it in the envelope and shove it in the drawer, then you don't have to deal with it. The true power back, honestly, here in finances is facing it. It's accepting what it is and it's knowing where you currently stand. Because if you know where you want to be, but you don't know where you currently are, how are you going to bridge that gap? So these two spots are not going to be enough for you. It's enough to get you started at least to lead you into the next portion of this. But what I want you to do on the left side on your worksheet is to write down every single expense that you have. Now, if you're a business owner, you can do this one for home and one for business. I think it's a really good idea to understand where all of your money is going in every capacity in your life. The easiest thing to do, because it's so easy to forget about the $2.99 here and the $14.99 there of recurring subscriptions and annual things that pop up, but is to go back through the last couple of bank statements. That's going to show everything, right? 
it's going to pop up whether you want it to or not. But this is going to allow you to break down every single expense that you have in your life and or in your business. Here's another power back moment with your finances. In your right column, I want you to write down all of the things that you just wrote in the left column that are not necessary. For instance, if you have a subscription every month for $7.99 for some sort of streaming service, is that necessary right now? Remember, just because you cut it right now doesn't mean that you're, you're doing a disservice to yourself, you're not grounding yourself, you're not saying, no, you can't ever have that again. It's just saying, right now I need to get really hyper-focused. How do I take my power back in my finances now so that I can have financial freedom later? Write down all the things that are not necessary. And then, here's your true homework. I want you to cancel them today. Get online, shoot the email, make a phone call, whatever it is, and start looking at what your bottom line starts to look like as you decrease those different subscriptions, or maybe it's a, an extra whatever that you're doing this month or next month or ongoing. Maybe it's that service that you had really good intentions on, but you don't, never use. I think we all know what that is. Let's be realistic about where you are right now. It's going to help free up so much capacity and give you so much power back in your finances because you're going to, one, you're going to know where your money is going. And two, you get to decide what is next. In the fourth section, this is where I want to encourage you again, we're going to come back to the voice, is I want you to write down all the ways that you silence your voice. This could be in life. This could be in business. These are all the moments where you're like, oh, I have something to contribute right now but I'm just gonna be quiet. Or you're in a meeting and you're like, hmm, I have a different opinion on that and I think this could work better, but I don't wanna overstep, so I'll just be silent. Maybe it's in your life or your home or your business. We are in a time frame where voices matter and we have to stand up for one another. Think of all the times in your home life when there are conversations or comments. You know, we are living in a time always where it is important to amplify voices, to stand up for what we believe in. What are all the moments where you're like, mm, it would just be easier if I just stayed silent? I want you to write those moments down. And they may not all come in as a flood, but again, the key here is in the awareness. Keep this handy dandy sheet work, you know, worksheet with you, take it around with you, or keep a notebook. Heck, you have notes on your phone. I want you to really just start building awareness around when you want to speak up, and you choose not to. The true power back is saying, no, my words are valid. I do have something to contribute. What if I had this conversation with someone and gave them a new perspective on life or people or purposes? What if when I showed up and said what I needed to say, I had a positive impact instead of assuming that no one wanted to hear you? And last but not least, this is where you get to take your power back in your business. So if you are an entrepreneur or a small business owner, this one is really for you. I want you to write down every service that you offer that doesn't bring you joy and money. A mentor once told me, he said, Laura, always do it full price or do it for free. Nothing in between. And those words have resonated with my soul always. Because when you start discounting yourself, when you start saying, oh yeah, my, this is probably too high for you, let me just bring it down. Let me just not charge enough off the bat because I, I'm not sure that people are gonna wanna pay me. So I'll just set the bar pretty low. But in return, that's only hurting yourself and your own business. I want you to write down all of those things that you do on a daily basis in your business and you're like, well, I don't know why I do this but it's here because I think everyone needs it, everyone wants it, and if I get rid of it, then I'm not gonna have any clients anymore and therefore my business is going to close. I say this because I know. I spent a lot of time and a lot of years and a lot of money doing a lot of things that did not serve my business well. Because here's where the true power back is, is doing what you do insanely well over and over and over again. You start attracting the right clients. You start raising the bar in your finances. You are going back to taking your energy back and putting all of your love and effort into the things that bring you joy, which in turn are bringing your clients joy. Guess what? We are magnets and whatever you're putting out 
is also what you're going to receive. In the right column, I want you to write down all of the things that you've been wanting to do. Maybe this is a service that really aligns with what you're doing, but you just haven't had the time or capacity. Maybe you just want to reroute things. Maybe you want to create a product. Maybe you want to create a new service. Maybe you want to travel or host conferences, whatever it is that you want to do. What are those things that you're like, I wish I had more time to blank. I want you to really evaluate these and say, is this something that I want to do because it's shiny object syndrome, something new, fresh to get me away from the things that I don't really want to do? Or is this an awareness moment where we can pivot and say, huh, how can this add to my goals? What if I get to do more of this and it also aligns with my financial goals and I also get to make a positive impact in the people that cross my path? My friend, there are so many ways that you can take your power back. It is unlimited. I again want to express that it all starts with the awareness. But before anything, I want to remind you of something really, really important. Is that you are worthy. I know in those dark moments, you start to really contemplate yourself and who you are and what you do and should you even anymore. The answer is you are more than enough, my friend. You are more than worthy and every vision that you've had has been given to you because it's possible. You will never see something that you can't achieve. Honestly, if you have a vision that crosses your path, it's because it's possible in your life. When you start to pivot and take your power back, your vision can match your reality. The thing that you see and feel in your body and you're like, oh, I can see it so clearly. Why isn't it here? When you start taking your power back in these different areas, those things start to combine. And all of a sudden you're gonna look around and be like, oh wait, what? <laughs> I'm actually living that thing that I've been dreaming about for so long. You shine so bright when you are 100% unapologetically who you are. And not to mention the fact that when you shine brighter, you give other people permission to do the same. Imagine being around all these people or crossing paths with one person that just is strong and confident and is doing something that they love, how do you feel after you spend time with them? You're like, huh, you know what? Maybe I can do this. That energy is contagious. You're gonna start attracting the right people, whether that's friends, neighbors, clients, vendors, people that you're gonna do business with in some form of capacity. When you are in your lane, doing you at your speed, the right people show up at the right time. You're also going to amplify the vibrant, strong, successful woman that you already are. I'm not here telling you anything that you don't already know. What's happening right now is all of those thoughts and feelings that have gone to the forefront are like, hmm, maybe if I took a step back or a sidestep, maybe that inner voice in you starts to shine up. Maybe she starts to ask, huh, what do I want? My friend, there is power in the pivot and you get to reclaim your life, your business, your finances, your energy. It's all possible. It has been an absolute pleasure being here with you today. If you'd like to connect further, visit lauraora.com for all the different tools and resources for you that are available. And until I see you next time, stay gutsy. Wow. That's the word. That's the word I'm walking away with. There are so many takeaways, so many ahas from Laura's presentation. I have a full paper, full, I, I kept doing it. Laura, I can't even just, friends, <laughs> you are more than enough. And every vision you have is possible because you have it. That was one of the strongest takeaways for for me put in the q a section any of those aha moments that you're having as we go through today's presentations and please take these moments for yourself listen in with all of your being so you can really resonate with and implement immediately these workbooks that you receive today they are meant to help you have a step by step taking you from that inspiration that i know you all have to that implementation that we are all set and ready and striving to have in our lives today, tomorrow, and beyond. 
I want to just real quick give a recap of some of those takeaways that I had. I'm hoping that they, re they, they connected with you. That connection, speaking of it, connecting you with you, that little girl inside of you that is still thrumming, thriving, and striving to breathe and have the more in life, she's there. Tap into her. Listen to that quiet little voice. You don't owe an explanation or an excuse. Pa, It's okay to say no. Facing your finances. She really did give a step-by-step -step through that career path, through that personal path to more. Look for where you're silencing your voice. Do what you do on purpose. We all rise together when we do that. When you stay in your lane, like she talked about, you are able to shine that light for yourself and for all of the women, for all of the people that are around you, yourself, your children, your family, that ripple effect is infinitesimal. What do you want? What do you want in your life today? That's the question I'm going to underline and highlight and put up on my fridge. I hope you take one of those messages that you're writing down from each one of today's present presentations, stick it on your fridge, put it in your pocket, put it in your pocketbook, have it with you. So our next up, Andy Overton. Oh my goodness gracious. There's not enough time to talk about how incredible this soul also is. She's gonna give us some, some hows, some pragmatic, practical, this is your bread and butter, how you move through career transitions, how you take up the educational components, and where do you turn, and how do you get there? So listen in, dial in close, get, get ready with your pen and paper, friends. Without further ado, Andy Overton. Hi, everyone. This session is all about training, education, and workforce development, and how each pathway or the combination of all of these pathways can help you create opportunity in your career or achieve a bigger goal in your life. So this is a bulleted list, and that can be super boring, but look at it this way. It's a collaboration of ideas and experiences, and when shared objectively, could help you in achieving your goals. So here is what I'll say. Understanding how you can create different pathways in your life to experience the goals you set forth can really only come from whatever it is that drives you the most. And I can't define what drives you the most. I might be able to show you ways to nurture it, to enlighten it, and to never stop pursuing it. But what it is, is your passion. And I am not that person to tell you what your passion is. Only you can do that. So why am I here? What the hell am I here for? Well, honestly, I'm here to serve as your cheerleader and guide in explaining some of the different options you have to achieve your goals through education, training, and workforce development. So why am I the preemptive leader in this field? I'm not, that's the whole purpose. I am just a person who's experienced more forms of training, of education, and workforce development. So picture this as a little diatribe, as if you were sitting down with a trusted friend who's about to drop some knowledge. And because I've been there, I've done that, I've got the participation trophy, I failed, I've succeeded, and I've crossed hurdles and sometimes took four steps back to take five steps forward. But because we're not quite besties yet, I should probably introduce myself to you. So my name is Andy Overton, and my pronouns are she, her, and hers. And I'm currently the director of business development in the partnership office at Mount St. Mary's University. So I've been working in higher education since about 2008. And before that, held positions in law enforcement, in government, in contracting, and in business. And I worked in the private sector, the government arena, and now I work directly with adult learners who need a little higher education cheerleading in their life. So I have a few advanced degrees and I've even run for a political office. I didn't win, but I ran for something. I ran for my passion. Um, so there's many different forms of training and education and workforce development that I've been involved in in like the last 20 years. So first, I think we need to come to some common ground on a few definitions, like what do I mean when I say student? Or what do I mean about lifetime learner? And what the hell is an education versus workforce development versus training? 
So we need to get these down so we're all on the same page. So let's define it. First, the definition of student is a person who takes an interest in a particular subject. Uh, it's vague, and I personally like that. It means we can be students in a whole lot of different ways in a whole lot of different industries. Second, lifetime learner. It's a form of self-initiated education that is focused on personal development. Third, the definition of training. Training, from that word train, not choo-choo, we're talking about leadership here, means to be taught through the practice and instruction. So when I say training or any portions of that word, I mean to learn a new something and then put that something into practice, literally put theory into action. So it's a two-way street between giver and receiver, between trainer and trainee. The trainer trains, the trainee absorbs, and then acts based on that training. Got it? Are we taking notes? It's okay, we'll review later. So if you don't put information into action, you haven't actually been trained. You've just sat through a really boring lecture. It's wickedly different, yes? Okay, fourth, education. The process of receiving or giving systematic instruction, especially at a school or university. That's a horrible definition. If you look at it online, it also says an enlightening experience. That is what we're going to go with today, an enlightening experience. So when people say, where'd you get your education? That generally means, where'd you go to school? So I like to ask, what type of experience would fill your soul, enlighten your mind, feed your passion? That seems to answer the question wickedly different than someone responding, I went to UND, I'm a Turk, which is cool. I got no problem with the Turks. I'm just saying there's more to you than that when you talk about your education in life. So. While training is the absorption of theory, placing it into practice, education is the enlightened experience or process that feeds your passion. It's a little bit different. Got it? All right. So in other words, it's growth, right? Remember, this event is called the Women's Growth Workshop. It's not people tell you something and you go do it. It's about your own personal internal growth. So the hard definitions are over. Let's look at what workforce development is. So fifth, workforce development. Employment initiatives, I'm already sleeping. Employment initi initiatives offered by agencies and government offices that help create, sustain, and retain a viable workforce. Sounds horribly boring, but I promise I'll put all of this together. Hear me out. In my world, workforce development is the epitome of lifetime learning. The student, enlightened by the training and her actions towards her goal, is forever perfecting her craft that feeds her reason why she does the work. It feeds her passion. So, like all of these pathways could be happening at one time. You could receive some training, taught something new that you could be useful in life. That creates an education or an enlightening experience. And in order to become a well-trained person in your career, possibly your own Personal workforce is your workforce development. I'm gonna let that sit for just a minute. Great, still taking notes? Awesome. So notice I have not applied these theories to any certain industry because that's not my job here. My job here is to help you understand what this is. I'm not your high school guidance counselor. I'm just here to give you the information so that you can apply it in your own world. So that's right. This is when you have to figure out what your passion is, where your interests lie, and what gets you up in the morning and puts you to bed exhausted at night. Because training is hard. Education is hard. And developing your craft can be exhausting, but it's totally worth it. So it's hard, but not impossible. Formal education is not easy. There's study and application and retention, and then you do it all over again and continue studying. Training is not easy. One training and a little application doesn't make you an expert at all. It doesn't automatically allow you to reach your goal. If we could take one class and be the expert, we would all have six pack abs after one sit up. And I am a testament that that theory doesn't hold any water. So the development of a viable workforce is not as simple as taking a class, fiddling around with a trade skill and calling your goal attained. 
It's the ability to continually learn, enlighten yourself, and apply theory to action until your craft is perfected. And since we are never perfect, you'll continue to grow and learn throughout your entire life, literally a lifetime of learning. So let's take a few examples of what each of our definitions mean in everyday life. So we're gonna apply this theory to the practice we all just talked about. First, training. So many different kinds of training, yo. I mean, if you Google it, you'll come back with thousands, if not millions of web pages. So we're gonna talk just about a few of these. Technical or technological training. It's how to perform the functions of the job that you're in. So in retail, it could be how to ring up a customer, taking money, putting it in the drawer, giving them the product. In food service, training could be understanding the menu so that when someone says, I'd like to substitute, substitute blue cheese for ranch, you can say yes or no. And in business, it could be training on how to log into a computer system. Let's go to quality training. It's important because it's literally eliminating the non-qualified items for your brand. I don't mean your in-laws and I don't mean your weird boss. What I mean is that the products that do not meet the expectations of the brand need to go. Okay, maybe it's your in-laws, that's up to you. Usually held in production jobs, the automotive plants or production warehousing. And while I joke here, quality training is found in something, some of the most important aspects of our life. The quality of the brake systems in our car, the food that we put in our bodies, or the medications we take to stay alive. I don't know about you, but I'm happy there's some dude at a Chevy plant discarding old brake lines that don't meet the high expectations of stopping my car. Quality training, folks. That's what we're talking about. So right now, my numbers on my slides are a little bit off, so we're gonna hit up number four first and then go back to number three. Just roll with it, all right? Skills training. Skills training involves specific skills that are niche to the job. Think plumbing and HVAC and electrical engineers, surgeons, car mechanics. All of these positions require specific skills training and are pretty much specific to their industry. Like you don't want a plumber to perform brain surgery on you. And I don't know of a lot of brain surgeons who are pretty um, adequate with plumbing. See how the two don't necessarily match. We'll go back to number three, soft skills training. Speaking of doctors, ever had a doctor experience where they're brilliant in the operating room, but they don't know how to talk to you? It's called bedside manner. It's called soft skills training. So the ability to communicate effectively, diffuse arguments or angry customers, and help relate products to people are soft skills. That's training. So salespeople should have a fantastic soft skills set along with customer service reps. I mean, in theory, we've all had those people, right? That you get on the phone with. Okay. Now it's not up here on the slide, but there is another kind of training. It's professional training and legal training. So I don't mean law school. I mean, real estate certification and certified project managers, OSHA regulators, housing, housing inspectors. Now there's a ton of other training definitions and we don't have time for it, but I think most folks understand that training, the ability to learn a new theory and put it back into action is defined in some of these incredible positions, which means if you're looking to cross over into real estate, as an example, um, understand that there are trainings you have to attend to prove that you can put theory into practice by passing a test. Let's keep going. Education. This is my wheelhouse now. I have to tell you as adult learners, getting back to class, is sometimes overwhelming and frankly terrifying, but it doesn't have to be. So many institutions are welcoming adult learners back to the classroom and they are trained in understanding our needs, our goals, our values in returning to class. There are lots of different programs you can study and that's not what this presentation is for. But let's chat, chat about modalities. So the manner in which or the vehicle in which we provide this education, online, blended, face-to-face of the more popular ways to receive education. So um, online academic programming can come in the form of asynchronous, asynchronous or synchronous classes, meaning your classes should be structured much like the project you may have at work or at home. There's a goal, there's a deadline, uh, there's the tools to use to complete it, and then you got to get it done. This is much like an asynchronous class, an asynchronous learning online. 
where there are classes that don't meet at any particular time, but you have these deadlines to meet, and even through learning theory and completing projects and discussions online, you get it done and submit your stuff by the deadline. Synchronous learning is having classes during a set time during the week to discuss the readings and apply the theory. So while online synchronous learning occurs outside the classroom, meetings are online through a computer, just like this, and they're in real time. So think, um, think face to face, but over Zoom, right? Deadlines for projects and assignments are provided and you worked your way through the literature and the theory. Face-to-face -face learning. It's exactly what you think it is. You sit in a class, you receive the information, you turn in your assignments, uh, you come back for another day. It could be five days a week, it could be twice a week, it could be three hours on a Wednesday. But the fact is you're sitting face-to-face -face with everyone else. Hopefully they have masks on at this point in time. Now blended learning is a completely different um, idea. It's a little bit of both. You get a little bit of online, you get a little bit of face-to-face, you put them both together. Probably learn in a classroom and submit your assignments online. Now this seems a little bit overwhelming, but the good news is, is that there's people like me who can help explain all of this to you as many times as you need it. Now most higher education courses result in some sort of conferred degree or academic certificate. So we're talking about transcripts and grades and credits and degrees awarded and caps and gowns, stages, handshakes, and diplomas. So I don't have a slide for workforce development because the concept is just really simple here. There's two kinds, workforce training, workforce development. Um, training is the skills required to immediately begin work. Think about apprenticeships. People are hiring kids to become plumbers. They gotta learn the trade first and then they become full-time employees. Workforce development is the lifetime learning. It's the skills and the knowledge and the education and the training you get after you've already received the job that the company would like to, for you to go a little bit further or you would like to take your career further. It's about what workforce development is. It's a lot, right? Totally. You ready for a pop quiz? No, I'm kidding, there's no pop quiz here. It's not gonna happen. So you can stop worrying. But let's talk about credentials. So training credentials usually come in the form of a certification to perform the job or to substantiate all the knowledge that you have. So even though you might have worked, say, for in IT for decades, it might be helpful, helpful to take a C++ certificate, it's IT language, uh, to substantiate your knowledge and put the degree up on the wall. It shows your employer or your potential employer or yourself that you can apply the knowledge that you've learned in applicable theory throughout the time that you're working. And it's usually given by a governing body that thinks you're pretty good at it. So that gives you a little bit more credence to do the job that you've already been doing. So credentials can be expensive and they may need to be renewed to keep them current. No matter your credentials, be sure to understand what it takes to keep them. So real estate licenses, project management, even CPR training all require some sort of recertification. Physical trainers, uh, you've got to learn all the new stuff that's happened since the last time you were certified. So you've got to stay on top of that because you don't want to lose what you've already known. You just want to make sure that you get the credentials to help you move forward. So, Education credentials, degree programs, right? Pomp and circumstance, big robes. We look like Harry Potter with up a wands. They come in the form of associate's degrees, bachelor's, post-baccalaureate certificates, graduate degrees, postgraduate certificates, doctoral programs. Yeah, there's more, but for the gist of it, that's kind of what we offer. But the accreditation of the institution and the school is wickedly important to factor, uh, a fact, a fact to consider. Understand that not all accrediting bodies are the same. And these are the questions you need to ask when you get somebody like me on the phone and you wanna know what programs are offered. So here's the deal. When seeking a degree program from a college or a university, regional accreditation, regional accreditation is the most secure than a national accreditation. I know it seems to be flipped if you're thinking about hierarchy, it's not, trust me, I work here. There's lots of reasons why it's not, but basically it's because regional accredited institutions, well, their credits are generally transferred to any other institution. Now, I know what you're thinking. Once I start a program, I'm never leaving. Okay, because life happens, right? You get a new job, you move, because you know all the education that you have. And if you have to transfer, and you're at a nationally accredited institution, there's a high probability they're not gonna go with you, and you've got to start over. So national accredited um, academic credits are highly restricted for transfer, and you need to consider that. 
here's what I mean. Regionally accredited institutions, Harvard, Yale, Princeton, the University of Maryland, Mount St. Mary's, yes, I put them all in the same category, you're welcome. Just about every institution across the US is regionally accredited. That means something, so do your homework. So there's also program level um, accreditations that you should be aware of, business, nursing, IT, and others have specific accreditations that can help you understand the manner in which the program is peer reviewed and substantiates the assessment of student learning. It means, in smaller words, you get what you pay for. If you sign up for a class, they give you that class and you've learned the information and you can apply it. So look, we've covered a lot today. Uh, your brain might be full, swirling thoughts, training, education, workforce development, it's okay. Remember, you've got to figure out your passion first, the it to your why. And there are lots of other folks like mentors and professionals or people like me, not an expert, just really experienced, that can help you travel safely down those pathways to achieve whatever it is you want to achieve. So all of this is to say, learning something new and applying that something new towards your goals, your passion, is a process that should be respected. So because its outcomes have the potential to increase your ability to do fabulous things by pursuing your passions and creating really enlightening experiences in your own world. Look, there are so many different branches to your growth and we've discussed a ton of possibilities for you to grow. So figure out what your passion is, that thing that gets you up in the morning and puts you to bed at night exhausted. Your next presenter, Morgan Plummer, will take that walk with you. Do great things. Thanks for listening. Be well. Andy Overton, thank you for putting into perspective the it to our why. What is my passion? That was the first thing I wrote down. I'm listening to this presentation and I'm taking it all in and I'm hoping you guys are doing the same thing. Information you can apply to your own world is going to change not only your world, but all of the women, the children, and the men in life that you get the opportunity to connect with. Education is hard. Training is hard. But you're worth it. She reiterated it just like Laura did, and I know you're going to hear that theme throughout the rest of today. So before we take that break, hold that thought because I want to make sure you jotted some of those aha moments down. So if you're still thinking about it and you're trying to catch up, take that breath right here, right now. Jot them down. I'm going to run down my list to give you a couple more if you missed it. Thank you for not having a pop quiz, Andy. That would have been not so cool this morning. So I'm very grateful. And that being said, thank you for the humor. One of the present or one of the participants today, Brianne, I'm going to call you out. Hopefully I pronounced your name right, but you're using that chat box. And again, I want to say thank you. We're going to have that Q&A section available too. But Brianne, you mentioned breaking the fear in me about business is making you laugh and helping you kind of branch out and see it from a different perspective. And that's what today's about. Every one of the presenters that you are having the opportunity today to meet with and see in their lane, they're bringing a new perspective, a new vantage point for you to look at your career path in you personally, because it's about growing both of those simultaneously. Um, so one of the other things I wrote down, your focus on workforce development is going to grow you and your career and the people you work with. Learning something new is applying and applying it is a process to be respected. I thought that was a really important thing to underline there. So welcome back. Are you ready to continue growing with us? That's our goal this morning. Um, like I said before we went on break, Andy went over many of the pieces to the how in this puzzle. The transitions, the leveling up, the educational workforce development, the growing on purpose with those training opportunities for yourself. Morgan Plummer is gonna take us on a journey, my friends. She is going to walk with us. One of her passions in life is connecting every woman with their confidence, helping them to take those next steps in honoring themselves, in identifying themselves as who they are, the woman you are right here today. 
So I hope you're ready. I hope you're listening. You've got your mind, your body, and everything collectively going at this moment. Without further ado, Morgan, take it away. Hi, my name is Morgan Plummer. I'm so excited to be here today for the Women's Growth Conference about your career and personal growth and development and all the things. We've had an incredible lineup of speakers and content, and I'm so excited to be here to share a little bit of my experience and expertise. So again, my name is Morgan Plummer. I am a certified coach and speaker with the John Maxwell team, and I love all things leadership and business um, mindset, growing, things of that nature. And I work with individuals one-on-one, -on -one, as well as organizations and teams together with communication and uh, leadership and growing and culture and all of those good things that help you feel more confident at work. So today we're going to dive into a little bit of that mindset, leadership, confidence, your career, and how it's all tied together and what you can expect for today as well as how you can prepare. So I know you've listened to some speakers already. You've had some really great content and I'm just asking for a little bit more of your time. I'm asking you to be present, uh, be ready to add value, be free of distractions. So I know you see your email popping up or your phone, but I'm asking you for 20 minutes to just set that aside and be here with me. Give, that, give yourself that piece of time today, okay? And be encouraging and willing to learn. What you can expect, we're going to talk about a mindset for success exposing your limiting beliefs. What are those limiting beliefs? Defining your story and re rewriting one that serves you. Wearing your suit of confidence as well as the wheel of life exercise. So you do have a handout, it's two pages. The first page are some questions that we're going to go through and feel free to take notes or jot down anything that speaks to you. And then the second page is an exercise that we're going to talk about at the end. So just a quick check-in before we dive in. I know you've already gotten some really great information today. I want to know how you're doing. 2020 has been crazy, right? How are you feeling? And I don't, I don't want to know the superficial, it's sunny out, right? I want to know how you're really feeling because it's been hard for all of us in a lot of ways. And I think it's been an opportunity to grow. That's been my hope for you anyway, to see where, where things could grow. And maybe there's some boundaries we need to put in place or some opportunities to change and shift and pivot. And I hope that you found that in this uncomfortable season that we've been going through. So let's go ahead and dive into the content. What is mindset? I say mindset all of the time because that's how, that's the, the facet that I work with people, right? But, but what is mindset? And you could say um, perception, the, the inner dialogue that you've got going on here, but really what is your mindset? And your mindset is how you see things, how you think about things, how you feel about things, the things you're saying up here. What is it that you're seeing, right? We could look at two different situations and it, one could be exceptionally positive in that we're looking for the answer. And the other side could be Eeyore, right? It could be a cloudy day and it's always raining. And which side of that spectrum are you on? Are you always looking for the light or do you see the negative of the situation? And I wanna stop here just quickly and tell you a little bit about why I do what I do and how I got here. It was almost six years ago when I was pregnant and they tell you all of the things, what you expect when you're expecting, but then you have this baby, this little boy named Brayden, and you're just out into the jungle. Nobody tells you what to do after that. And for the first year of having my son, I felt this inner struggle of how do I be me, this ambitious soul that wants so much out of this life? And then how do I be a present mom? Because I felt like I had to choose between one or the other, whether it was somebody telling me that you should work or you should stay home or you should be present all the time for your kids. And, and nobody tells you when your babies, when they're babies that you want to be there and then they grow up and you want them to go away for a little bit. But how, how could I have a combination of all of those things? And at the time I was in a career that was not fulfilling and it was, it, I almost felt sick to go to work every day. But then I wanted to be at home and be present and I had to still provide financially in some facet. So, so how do you have all of those things? And do you ever feel like, raise your hand if you feel like that was you maybe at some point in, in your life if you've had older kids or maybe you have younger kids now, but nobody tells you what the answer is. And there is no answer because you get to decide and, and there is no right or wrong answer here. 
but you have to do what's right for you. So I tell you this because I don't want you to think at the end of this presentation that you have to put your two weeks in and quit your job and build this business. That's not true. I want you to feel fulfilled in your career, whether that's working for an organization or whether it's working for yourself or whether it's at home raising your children, okay? Because you can have all of those in whatever way that looks like for you. And I want you to know that you don't necessarily have to choose and whatever you do choose is the right answer for you. I felt this pressure that I had to just quit the job and be home and, and it was what was going on in here, my mindset was not good. And that was trickling into every other area of my life. And I don't want that for anybody else. I don't want another woman to feel that she's alone, that she is struggling, that nobody else understands what she's going through because what's personal is universal. And I'm willing to guarantee that the thing you're going through right now, this hill that you're walking up, somebody else is going through it as well. And they need to hear from you that they too are not alone. So I'm so passionate about mindset because if you can get what's going on up here straight, if you can find fulfillment and purpose in whatever it is that you're doing, every other area of your life is going to light up. Okay. I'm willing to bet money on that. So it's important that we talk about mindset and what is the difference between coaching, right? I'm, I'm a certified coach. So what is that? What is training? What is mentoring? Mentoring is sharing experiences. Training is teaching something just like we're doing today. And coaching is asking questions. So as we go through this PowerPoint, you're going to see me asking a lot of questions and I'm doing that because I can't answer those things for you. So as you're sitting back and watching this video, I want you to sit with these questions and I want you to think about what they mean to you. What are the answers and where do you want your life to go because you get to decide. So write the questions down or write the answers down, take what speaks to you and do something with it. And here's the thing, if I ask you a question and you come upon that answer yourself, you are more likely going to follow through. Because how many times have we said we're going to start a diet on Monday and by Wednesday we've quit because brownies, okay? You have to come to this answer yourself. You have to decide what you want your life to look like in order for you to get there. So your mindset is critical in your success. And I know Andy has talked about the facets of how to pursue your education and what are the opportunities out there and, and how can you do it and where can you do it and all of those things are great, right? That's how we get to where we want to go. Personal growth should be endless. But if you don't have a why connected to it, if you don't know how and why you're going to get there, there's no emotional pull, it's not going to happen, right? We have to dig deeper than the surface level stuff that we're just talking about, right? Let's stop talking about the weather and let's start talking about how we're really doing. So it's imperative that today you connect with the why of where you're at in your life and where you want to go so that you can then utilize these avenues to get there, okay? So where your focus goes, your energy flows. We talked about your mindset. What side of the spectrum are you looking on? Where your focus goes, your energy flows. So are you looking at the good or are you looking at the bad? We operate on this vibrational level, right? We're all energy. And if you're operating at this lower energy, this sad, depressed energy all the time, those are the things that you're going to attract. But if you increase your energy, it's going to get a lot better, all right? We talked about this at another event and uh, it's, it's how do you increase your energy? How do you raise your vibration? And for some people that's exercise, it's all about movement. We're not meant to stay stagnant. We're not meant to sit still, just like we're not meant to be stagnant in life, right? You're not meant to be the same thing for the rest of your life, okay? Um, but if you stand in the superwoman pose or superman pose for a couple minutes, there's a chemical released in your brain where you are, or you're happier, you feel uplifted, your energy is higher. It's a, it's a proven fact, I promise, okay? So before I go on stage, I might just stand here in like the superwoman pose for a while. But what are you doing to increase your energy? And it looks different for everybody. For me, it's reading, for me, it's exercise. Maybe it's taking a walk, maybe it's getting away from my kids. What is that thing for you that you need to do to increase your energy? Because where your focus goes, your energy flows. And the third part of mindset is what is your perception, right? How do you feel in here versus what you're seeing outside? It's going to be a mirror. The things that you're feeling up here, the things that you're saying, if there's going to be a direct correlation on the outside perspective of your career, of your relationships, of your friendships, of your financial stability, all of the things. 
So you have to do the hard work of getting your mind right to balance everything else out. And balance is not a good word, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. So what are your limiting beliefs? Let's expose them. Let's talk about these big, hairy, scary limiting beliefs, okay? And again, this might be a, uh, a foreign term if you're not used to the personal development world. So what are they? Your limiting beliefs are the stories we tell ourselves about the things we can or can't have. And I'm willing to bet that they originated as children, something our parents told us or our siblings or our family, maybe it was something we were conditioned with in school. But what are the stories you're telling yourself? And these are um, super minuscule, but my children have been my greatest, uh, my greatest blessing and lesson. I have a two and a five year old. So for example, if, I, if the kids go to grab money off the ground and I'm like, oh my God, don't touch that, money's dirty. What am I teaching them? I'm teaching them that money is a bad thing. It is dirty, they shouldn't pick it up off the floor. But by me saying, don't touch that money, it's dirty, that's a negative connotation towards money, right? I'm instilling some kind of fear. Money doesn't grow on trees, lack, scarcity. What are the limiting beliefs that you were told as a child that are still playing in your life today? And you're not, you may not have all of the answers now. Sometimes when I was really doing this, this hard inside work on myself, it was like in the shower and I'm like, oh my gosh, like that's where that story came from. But really think about it because we're so busy and we're just moving so quickly. We're not slowing down to actually reflect and think. What are the limiting beliefs that you're telling yourself? Write them down, okay? I gave you these two pieces of paper for a reason. You have to separate it from your mind onto the paper. So what is an example of a limiting belief that you're telling yourself? Money doesn't grow on trees. Don't touch that money, it's dirty. Um, I can't be an entrepreneur because my parents never had a business. All of these silly things that we tell ourselves, but we've never actually sat back and said, why? Why, why does that have to be my reality? Your limiting beliefs and fears are directly related to your current reality. So the stories you're telling yourself are playing outside of you today. Just take a look and see. And then also recognize where do they come from? So was it something your parents said or your family members, um, something you seen growing up, something we see on TV, in the news, on social media? Where are these limiting beliefs come from? And I'm, I'm very uh, stern in that you have to do this hard work and it might make you feel uncomfortable to recognize these areas of opportunity because if you don't, they will never change. Nothing changes if nothing changes. So sit down and reflect a little bit on the stories you're telling yourself. What is your story? So aside from the limiting beliefs, we also have these stories of what our life should look like. What are women supposed to be and do and have? And what are they? And that this looks, I'm telling you, this looks different for everybody. I keep saying this, but I'm willing to bet that every single one of you watching this is speaking to you differently. So what is the story that you've been telling yourself right now? Is it that women are supposed to wash the dishes so that's what you do every day? It could be something super simple and minuscule, but what are the stories that you're telling yourself that keep replaying that maybe aren't settled because that's not how it's supposed to be in your life, all right? And once you realize what this story is, what do you want it to look like? And I promise you get to decide. It might be a stretch if you want to like travel the world on a yacht with your feet up and a mimosa. And if that's your thing, like go do it, girl. But if it's not, what do you want your story to look like? And an example is that I, I wanted to have the freedom to coach and work with people and speak and the freedom to be there with my kids. And I get to have both because I took that really hard decision and really hard leap and scary leap to leave the corporate world and do my own thing. But I had to work through my own stuff to get there, right? I cried a lot. Nobody tells you about that jump when it happens. But I knew that to get to where I wanted to go had to be really brave and really scary. So ask yourself, what, is, what, what do I want my life to look like? Do you want to feel fulfilled in your career? And if you do, what does it look like? Are you scared to take a different position or a different opportunity because of what somebody else might think? Because that's not what you went to school for? Because that's not what your parents do? 
You have to answer all of those questions, but truly sit back and ask, what do I want my life to look like? It could be financial freedom. It could be fulfillment in your career. It could be launching your own business. It could be launching a side business just because that brings you joy and you get to make your own money to get your nails done. There's no right or wrong answer here, but you have to decide what you want. How has the story you're telling yourself helped you or hurt you? What does that look like for you? Are you staying somewhere just because that's the right thing to do? Are you staying somewhere just because you're comfortable, but in your heart, you know that there's something more? Are you taking notes right now? That's what this first page is for, okay? How has the story you've been telling yourself helped you and or hurt you? And the third part is, are you willing to do the hard work to get to where you want to go? Are you willing to do the hard work to rewrite your story? You get to decide. When I left the corporate world, it was incredibly scary. I didn't know how I was gonna pay my mortgage in 60 days, but I just knew that if I didn't jump then, I would never jump. So are you willing to do that one hard thing to have all the blessings afterwards? And you have to make that decision. And this could be, again, related to your career or your financial situation or your relationships or your health. But are you, are you willing to do the hard thing to come out bigger and better on the other side? So what is confidence? So this, is, this is an arbitrary thing, right? I work with a lot of women and the resounding theme is confidence and perfection. What does confidence mean? This is on your notes. What does confidence mean to you? Does it mean standing up tall? Does it mean laughing? Does it mean boisterous? Uh, does it mean speaking on a stage? What does confidence mean to you? What does it look like? What does it feel like? And the same thing could be said about perfection. What does perfection look like, right? I, I can't do this thing until I have it perfect. Okay, what does perfect look like? There's no one definition. Who do you know that is confident, right? You're thinking of all of the things that confidence is or are. Who pops into your mind? Who is confidence? Who is confident? Does somebody come up to you? Do you think of somebody right now? What does she look like? What do they do? How do they act? How do they carry themselves? See, these are the things I'm not telling you to be somebody you're not, okay? This is a very important message here in that you have to stand true to who you are be in alignment with the things that you want, but what does confidence look like to you? What does it feel like? You have to know those things to feel confident. And then how would your life look like? How would your life look if you showed up confident? What would it look like tomorrow if I, Morgan, woke up confident? And write that down. So let's talk about your purpose in your career. What is your purpose? Are you living in it? And can your purpose and career be one? Are they one in the same thing? And I come back to, you don't have to feel compelled to quit your job, to, to leave the corporate place, to have, you know, to travel on a yacht or whatever the social media tells us we should be. But really, what is your purpose? Is it helping people? Is it empowering people? Is it taking care of your body? Is it fostering your relationships? and then looking at your career. And it doesn't necessarily have to be one in the same, but there does have to be an alignment. Okay, so if you feel compelled to help people, how can you help people in your career, even if it's not necessarily in your job description? You spend more waking hours at your career, at your job, than you probably do at home, so it's really important that you feel fulfilled there. And you have to do the hard work and answer the questions to step into your power in whatever way that looks like in your career, right? And in regards to your purpose, I'm sorry to say that there is no magic eight ball, but you do have to do that inside work to really find what lights you up. And the biggest lesson I think I learned when I had my kids was you lose a piece of yourself. And I'm grateful that I'm not waking up in 20 years wondering who I am anymore because I did the hard work now and that inner growth and development. So we're going to end here quickly with the wheel of life exercise. And if you look at page two, you're going to see, it looks like a, a pizza pie, okay? There's different areas, health, wealth, fitness, um, relationships, finances, whatever it is. Shade in those areas from the inside out, from zero to 10, and rate those. 
right? Are they all tens? Are they all fives? Are some threes and some tens? What does your circle look like? Because if you have a flat tire that's going to pour into every area of your life, it could be the flat tire in your career that's making your personal life harder. It could be your health that's making your career harder. But you have to analyze where you're at so that you know how you get to where you want to go. So do this Wheel of Life exercise. You'll see it here. Shade it in and look at the circle and see what it looks like. And it'll tell you, it'll show you the areas of opportunity where you can grow. Thank you for your time today. I hope you found some value in your mindset and your limiting beliefs. I encourage you to do the hard work. Find your why and your purpose so that you can utilize the other resources today to get to where you want to go. Thank you. Thank you, Morgan. Absolutely excellent perspective on how to pivot and switch up our mindset and how important it is to having that ability to really transform ourselves in our lives and our careers personal professional it's inner yeah, interconnected it's integrated the mindset for success so i'll go ahead i'm going to go down through my notes again i want you to grab some of these aha moments i'm hoping that i'm just reflecting and reiterating what the presenters are saying that you didn't quite get a chance to write down take this moment with me to breathe and just go over your notes you're not alone What's personal is universal. And I did see someone pop that up in our chat box down below. So again, thank you for using that tool in this morning's presentations. It's absolutely imperative that we stay connected, even in amongst all of the social distancing. We are trying to make sure that you are equipped with ways to stay on top of things and connected in each other's lives. Um, how do I be me and be the mom I want to be? So. I I know that that's going to resonate with a lot of our women today. As a mom of seven myself, it was a struggle that I still have. I've got age ranges from nine to 22 years old. I call them my stair steppers, and they're definitely little reflections of me and what's taking place in the world and how I'm showing up to my life. I can see it in my children's faces if I'm not being present, and I can feel it not only in my own self, but in the energy that happens in the room. So taking that time to realize that you don't have to choose between the two. You don't have to compromise and select family over career. You can have both. You can grow in both those fields and you can grow them together. Um, are you willing to do the hard things to come out the other side where you want to be? We've listened to presenters so far that have talked about identifying what that purpose and passion is in our life. Morgan did an exceptional job on taking us along that journey through the emotions and just honestly setting us up for the last presenter today and really bringing all of it home. Who do you know that's confident? Staying true to yourself and stepping into your own alignment. Those are such incredible, insightful, and difficult. If I'm really being honest this morning and I'm hoping we're all having those moments of transparency and stepping into the vulnerability, and just into that arena, as Brene Brown will tell us, be kind and compassionate to yourself in this pillar of strength as well. Our careers and our connections in life, they make up a great deal of our lives, as you see on that wheel of life that Morgan uh, showed us. One of you popped in the chat box that I have one really flat tire. And, you know, honestly, we all do. In one way, shape, or form, we go through life and we've all got to change that tire and we can be each other's asset along the way and we can help to pump up that tire and get us rolling again. So without further ado, let me go ahead and introduce our last presenter today for our, our workshop. We have Amy Taylor coming up. Um, I'm taking a moment of pause because I want us to really breathe and take in what's about to take place. Our last presenter today is, is gonna be quite literally guiding our feet. I want to ask you to really think on the last time that you thought about the steps you're taking in life and the actual soles of your shoes. I know it's been a while for me. I want us to just take a nice deep breath in together for a second because I want us to be ready to receive the message that's about to take place. 
I know all of the presenters today brought their A-game. I know that this was a passion of theirs to bring to you and connect with you their life experiences. And our next guest is no exception. Amy Taylor is going to give you a different perspective, again, on growing your career, your connections, both personally and professionally. Without further ado, Amy Taylor. Well, hello, ladies of the Women's Growth family. My name is Amy Taylor, but I'm known as the Shame Eliminator. My life purpose is to teach women how to remove their shoes of shame and stand in their shoes of power and promise. And ladies, I gotta be honest, I am super excited and I am honored to share this virtual space with you today. And I will be speaking and sharing some tips on releasing the shame to unlock your mind, your money, and your motivation. So let's go over that agenda quickly. So I'll do my brief introduction and then I'll share my story with you and then again, we're going to unlock the three M's, mind, money, motivation. And then I'll just go over a brief closing motivational minute. Today, I stand before you as a whole woman. Ambitious, confident, God-fearing, resilient, victorious, bold, and beautiful. But truth is, I wasn't always confident, resilient, or whole. I was crippled by shame. But throughout my healing journey, I'm now able to see myself as a necessity and not an afterthought, because I matter. In July of 2008, I married my forever partner, and life was pleasant. Now, it wasn't perfect, but definitely it was working for us. Fast forward to October 2008, my life was barely recognizable. Married for only three months, my husband made a decision that would cost him his career and a few years of his freedom by going to prison. On the screen, you're gonna see my emotional shame chart because these are the feelings that I felt as I was going through all of the different changes in our lives. Confusion, overwhelm, sadness, betrayal, frustration, anger, and a host of other emotions were crowding my thoughts. Now, unfortunately, at the age of 12, and again, at the age of 15, I experienced many of the same emotions and a mountain of shame, but this time, this time, ladies, it was different. The shame was different. You see, this shame wasn't my shame. But as his wife, what he did, it fell on me. So now I was wearing my husband's shame. This shame pushed me into a deep isolation. I walked away from my mobile spa business. I stopped taking calls. I stopped going out. And I even stopped visiting with family and friends. The visits became less and less. My family was worried about me. Heck, I was worried about me. I was in a dark place. There was a time when I stayed in the bed for a month. I couldn't even muster up the strength to take a shower because the shame had literally gotten the best of me. I felt lost. I lost all sense of who Amy was. I stopped caring about my parents. I hadn't gotten my hair shampooed in six months. I forgot what it felt like to feel beautiful. I forgot what it felt like to just take care of myself. Ladies, you've been there. I'm sure some of you have been there. I forgot what it feel like to take care of myself. But one day, I got up and I went to the salon. Now, when I sat at the shampoo bowl, you know how ladies, when you have a ponytail hold, your hair is up in a ponytail and the stylist, she went to remove the ponytail holder and she gasped at what she had saw because the hair in the middle had been gone, all because I had not shampooed my hair in such a long time. Now, after getting my hair styled, I got into my car and as I began to, I, you know, I had to fix the rear view mirror because you got to make sure you can see. And I'm fixing the rear view mirror 
and I stopped and I did a double take. The tears began to just stream out of my eyes because I had forgotten who Amy was. I'd forgotten who that woman was in the mirror. So yes, ladies, shame knocked at my door, but I can almost guarantee you that one or even a few of you listening in right now, you have experienced some sort of shame when it grounded you to a place of hiding and desperate for answers. You know how it is. We sometimes we just, we're desperate for answers. We want to know what happened. How did I get here? How did my life get here? So ladies, what is the shame that's knocked you down? For me, it was wearing somebody else's shame, wearing my husband's shame. But what is your shame? Maybe for you, it was the loss of a job, the loss of your home, the loss of a business, an abortion, divorce, bankruptcy, or something you vowed to take to your grave. The point is, no matter the shame, we must grow through the grieving in order to release the shame, unlock your mind, your money, and your motivation. So ladies, it's time to disrupt the shame. It's time to fight for your fears. It's time for change. Yes, ladies, it's time for change. So this is what I need you to do. I want you to take out your pen and your pad, and I want you, as, I want you to start um, writing down some things because as I give you these simple yet actionable strategies of what shame will no longer impact your life about, we're gonna go over that and what that looks like. So what you see now is, <laughs> excuse me. So ladies, we're gonna discuss the first step of unlocking your mind. Mind your mind, motivate your mind every day by embracing the positives. Learn to own your time by adding you to your calendar. It's okay to say no, ladies. No is a complete sentence. Ask yourself these two questions. What do I want? What do I deserve? Now, be sure to have your journal available because it's something about the visual. So when you have your journal, journal available and you're able to um, jot down your responses to the two questions, what do I want? What do I deserve? Having your journal visible, it can be very effective to the mind. The second step is to unlock your money. Now, make an investment in yourself that you won't be able to walk away from. Now, ladies, you know some of us, we invest in... Um, different coaches or just different um, classes or, or academies, different things that we need to help grow us, to help grow our finances um, in life. So lady, you wanna invest in something that you won't be able to walk away from because we can't be just giving away our money. Do not invest in fear. It will delay your financial freedom. Take action of your finances today Stop the emotional spending and put yourself on a financial diet. Now, what do I mean about the financial diet? You know, you may have some girlfriends or some of your sister friends who say, listen, let's, let's go to lunch. Well, you know, during COVID, we're in COVID right now. So you can say to her, listen, right now I am really trying to grow my portfolio. I'm trying to grow my finances. And because of that, I put myself on a financial diet and I must stay committed to that. So instead of us going out and me spending money, um, what I would like, maybe we can do the Zoom. You know, everybody's doing Zoom nowadays. So let's, let's have a, a lunch over Zoom. So lady, that's what I mean. Or maybe you may see a person, you say, well, no, I don't need that purse. Or I don't need those shoes right now. Because again, you're putting yourself on a financial diet. The third step is to unlock your motivation. <clears throat> Excuse me. Start your day with intention. Schedule time for short walks. Oh, those short walks, they're wonderful. You will notice an increase in your motivation and your energy. Next thing to unlock your motivation, recognize that your value is valuable. Now, what do I mean by your value? Now, you, if you value yourself, others will value you. If you do not value you, Others would not value you. 
They may not value your time. They may not value your expertise. They may not value what you're bringing to the table. So ladies, always value your valuable because you always value you because you're very valuable. And remember, the key here is when you value you, others will value you also. The next thing is to always do affirmations. Now, ladies, I know that you've heard this, but it's very critical to unlock your motivation. Very critical that we unlock the motivations. In order to do that, we have to speak daily affirmations. So let me give you a share of food because these motivations, it will help you to reshape any negative beliefs that you may have. So here are a few. I have full confidence in what I do. I am focused on my success and happiness. I am braver and stronger than I believe. I walk by faith and will no longer allow shame to keep me bound. And another affirmation is, I will starve my doubts and, and feed my focus. So now we're going to take a look at the Shameless Living Growth Chart. And I want to take this time to really speak to the individual um, who is experiencing some type of shame. You know, you're, you're ready to create new memories and move forward. But let's talk about that. The first one will be restart. And you'll see that image on the screen. Restart your life by denouncing shame and identifying your values. Reimagine life and destroy those old boundaries of shame and follow yourself to envision the enormous possibilities. Let me say that one again. Reimagine life and destroy those old boundaries of shame and allow yourself to envision the enormous possibilities. Ladies, we have so many possibilities. Possibilities are endless. So let's take advantage of that. Reengage with community, however that looks to you. Rediscover you. And ladies, ladies, I need you to understand one thing. You are pearls of great value. Shame has no place in your new identity. And the last um, thing on the growth cycle, the living growth, shameless living growth cycle is recharge your internal battery. Now, I just want to take a moment and just kind of go over just the first two. I want to kind of dive just a little deeper for the first two. Um, so restart your life by denouncing shame and identifying your value. What does restart mean? What does that mean as we're going through or overcoming the shame, releasing the shame? You want to take the time to sit down. You want to breathe. Just stop everything. Because remember, you're restarting this new life. Because remember, the shame had you crippled. The shame had you bound. So now we're looking to restart our life and we're denouncing the shame so to restart that just take a moment and you stop as they say stop smell the roses because you want to take the time to get in alignment with the new you because if you are out of alignment you cannot move forward in life so that's what I mean by restarting restarting your life giving yourself a whole new focus now, reimagine life. Reimagining life for me, when, as I was going through and overcoming the shame, I, there's different steps that you have to take. So for me, as I in reimagine life, I reimagined me being able, for me, it was so critical to help other women overcome their shame. So to overcome that shame, because it's a process, you have to put yourself in a place. You have to do a mind shift. You have to reset values, reset your goals, and reimagine, well, this is what my life is going to look like now. So I knew that helping other women to overcome that shame, to release that shame, it was huge for me. So I had to then take the necessary steps, hiring a coach, placing myself 
there. And I was reimagining me helping another woman see a smile on another woman's face. Yes, we crying together, laughing together. But so ladies, reimagine what that looks like for you. What is reimagining this new life as you are destroying the old boundaries of shame? Because remember, you can't allow shame to keep you bound. So that's what I mean. So now, ladies, I will go more into the other steps, but at this time, I won't. But, you know, once you join my community, then we can go further into that. But um, right now, I just wanted to give you a little taste. Uh, and trust me, there's more to come. I just wanted to give you a little taste of what that looks like. So as I begin to wrap up, I will end with a poem by Langston Hughes. But first, ladies, I know that there's a few of you ladies wondering, well, what happened with the marriage? Did she divorce the shame or did she divorce the spouse? What happened? Well, if you would like to know how things turned out and receive an amazing free gift, then I, have, I will ask you to just go ahead on over to www.divorcetoshame.com and you will get this amazing free gift to help you to free your shame and be able to move forward in life. Um, and then by doing, going to www.divorcetoshame.com, you'll be able to join my community and we can connect and then you'll be able to um, get newsletters and hear new updates of things that I'm doing. So now, ladies, it is time for the Motivational Minute. Well, ladies, I tell you, life for me ain't been no crystal stair. It's had tacks in it, and splinters, and boards torn up, and places where there ain't been no carpet on the floor. Bad. But all the time, I've been a climbing on and reaching landings and turning corners, and sometimes going in the dark where there ain't been no light. So ladies, don't you turn back to that shame don't you sit down on those stairs because you find life kind of hard. Don't you fall now, but I still going, honey. I still climbing, and life for me ain't been no crystal stair. Now, life for you may not have been a crystal stair either, but I want you to speak life into yourself. Speak life into your future. Love and nurture the person that you see in that mirror each and every day because you matter. Ladies, thank you so very much. I really hope that we can connect. I really hope to have you a part of my community. And I just thank you and I pray that change comes soon. Ooh. You matter, ladies. I can't possibly follow that any better than how Amy ended it. That poem was incredible. Amy, thank you for sharing your passion, your purpose, and your walk those shoes that you took off and the new ones that you put on and the way you reframe, reframed your life is a testament to what we can do when we choose to be intentional with our mind, with our bodies, with our souls and our life's purpose while we are here to do so. I'll go ahead again. I'm going to go down a couple of things that I jotted down. I really want you guys to take that moment to take notes, get those aha moments, when you come back through this at the end of the workshop, you're gonna be able to have a different perspective yet again. You're gonna read what you wrote and you're gonna see it and hear it and feel it from where you're at at that moment. So just those notes are so, so important. The shoes of shame are coming off, my friends. We are necessities. We are not an afterthought. Your mind, your money, and your motivation is up to you. Embrace the positives add you to your calendar. Let me say that one again, because I know that's something that I have struggled with through all of these different moments of growth. Add you to your calendar. That's your special homework assignment for today. Do not invest in fear. Go on a financial diet and stay committed. That's a diet I can do. Unlock your motivation. Set your intentions, both physically and emotionally. We are pearls of great value. I love the analogies in this. So my friends, it is absolutely awesome that we're here at this point in our day. I get to bring back the guru of organizational joy, making this 
just come together. Our Q&A section is up next. Jen, are you there? Are you ready? I'm here. I'm here. <clears throat> All right. Take it away, my friend. Thank you. So I have been blown away, as I'm sure you all have, and I've been watching all of the chats. And it's really interesting um, because I found some universal themes that went through almost all of the um, discussions. First, there were a lot of tears. Um, as, as women, I think one of the gifts that we have is that we are emotive and we can feel our feelings and we are allowed to express our feelings. Um, and, and we'll talk about some of those um, prescriptions that, they, that society's put on us that limits our expression, but tears and, and, and having tears through your fear, but yet going forward bravely and forging a new path. Um, I also love the theme of no you know, allowing us to say no. Um, we are really not socialized to say no. So I love the fact that all of our presenters are, are reinforcing that. Um, and the reshaping those negative beliefs um, into something positive. We don't need to, to kind of walk around with the same scripts. And then, you know, really the overarching theme for the whole morning is um, as women, it's time to stop discounting our value and our worth and that we really need to invest in ourselves. So with um, having said that, I'm gonna ask all of our panelists to go ahead and turn on your videos, but keep your mics um, muted until you are answering um, the questions. And I'm just gonna throw out some questions. There are questions that came up um, in the question box. There were also themes that came up in the chat. So why don't we just jump in? Um, I'll go with the first question though, since um, Amy just uh, got done speaking. And Amy, this is for you. Brianne writes, um, how do you restart and release the shame that hits when you put time into your own self-fulfillment, but that then takes away the time from her little boy? Amy, you're on mute. Hello, thank you so very much for um, the question. And I did um, respond back to Brienne's um, um, question, but I wanted to let her know that it's never too late to start um, with your little one. It's never too late because every day we have a new day to start over. So never think that um, you gave yourself self-fulfillment and oh, now what do I do? Well, now, you can start from today and that will give you a brand new start. So let's start where we are right now today. Perfect, thank you. So it's, it's just really trying to get rid of that guilt and, and uh, focusing on you and re realizing, you know, it's like the stewardesses, I shouldn't call them stewardesses, that's not politically correct. The flight attendants say, if you don't, um, if you don't give to yourself with that oxygen first, you're not going to be able to hurt anyone, hurt, you're not going to be able to help <laughs> anyone else. So make sure that you're filling up. Thank you for that, Amy. Um, I'm just- Jennifer, could I reach in quickly? You sure can, Morgan. Just something else. I think there's a difference in like neglecting our kids, right? Like not filling the chocolate milk cup as fast as they would like. But what if we changed our perspective to teaching them how to go after their dreams too? You know, I think that if we show them that we can be ambitious and go after the things instead of making, oh my gosh, I'm sorry, motherhood martyrdom, we're teaching them. Do you have a chance to hop back in, Morgan, or should we hold that thought? That, we'll that, that was it. I'm sorry. We can move on to the next okay. one. <laughs> you know what? And Morgan, this is a prime example, though, of what we're doing as women, um, especially working women. We are juggling so many different hats um, and trying to be everything to everyone. So that actually leans me into another question. Um, I don't even remember who I had it written down. But we talked about, bear with me, about um, as women, um, we are given, um, we're told how we're supposed to be, how we're supposed to act, what we're supposed to do. 
that we're supposed to be quiet. We're not supposed to ask for that raise. We're not supposed to um, be assertive, et cetera. Can somebody talk to me about um, how do we, I think it might have been Laura in the beginning when you were talking about how we kind of get over that fear and that mindset and realize that we are worthy, we are enough, um, and that we do deserve to be heard. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, you know, that's taking your power back in your voice, right? Like we are often trained to um, be silent, sit back, wait for someone else to speak up, wait for someone else to to step in um, because their thoughts and their words and their feelings are stronger or more valid than yours. Well, that is all in the mindset shift, like Morgan was talking about. It's really just shifting your mind to really step in to say, you know, like my words matter. I do have experience. I have something of value to add to this. And if I don't speak up, the answer is always going to be no, always, every single time. So it's really putting the value on where you are currently and where you want to be and knowing that to get to that point you have to step into your own courage and i know it's super scary and it feels really vulnerable and very just you know like kind of stepping out on stage naked it feels really really scary but you do that once and then you do it again and then you do it again and your voice is like a muscle and the more you flex it the stronger it gets and then before you know it you're going to be like you're going to be showing up in all kinds of places. And that's where a lot of the energy and the power really lies. That's perfect. Thank you, Laura, because I know um, I had to, you know, just as um, an employee, when I was restarting my career after taking time off from um, being full time at home, raising children, um, it was very intimidating, you know, to go and ask for a salary to say, you know, yes, I may have been away from the full-time world of work, but, um, you know, I still have value. I still have worth. And I actually had to um, practice having those conversations about what to ask for salary. And I had to, um, I had to do research and, and uh, say that this is what this position is worth. And this is what I believe that I'm worth as well. So yes, practicing and the more times you do it, the um, easier it, is, it will get. So thank you so much. Andy, I'm switching gears on you because Denise had a question and she wrote it in our question box and she has two employees who need to get their degree. Um, how can she best assist them in guiding them to pick the best school and in how to go about getting that degree? She wants to know, is there a questionnaire or a flow chart to help them decide on the options that best fit them and their career aspirations. Holy cow, what a powerful and packed question. We'll have to undo that a little bit and see where we land. Um, is there a flow chart? Sure, there's a thousand things out there that you can inject and kind of figure out where you want to be, but it's not specific. So I think the best way to support our employees is to sit down and ask about goals, needs, vision, and value. Um, and figure out, um, and these are for your employees to figure out exactly what it is they want in an end goal. Do they need a degree in order to move up in their career? Do they want to learn something new or just substantiate the knowledge they already have? And these are the kinds of questions that you really got to put down on paper and kind of get out of your head and see it. And then from there, it's all about research. There are a lot of programs out there. The good news is, is once you figure out where you want to go and what that degree is going to serve you, you can start asking questions and you should. And I'm going to piggyback on exactly what Laura just said. You got to call some schools and say, I want this. Do you have it? Um, and, and so if, if you don't know what you need, you're going to be sold on just about anything out there. So you've got to figure out how you want to take your courses online, in person, a little bit of both, and what you want to study and why, and ask the hard questions, advocate for yourself. Um, and I think that's the best way to figure out which path is yours. The other good news is you're going to get my information. And if you have any questions for your employees about any school in Maryland, I know just about all of them. I would be happy to talk with you as well and help navigate those, um, uh, those pathways. So you can find someone like me. You can go to a career center. But really, what you got to do is sit down and figure out where you want to end up and what the best pathway for you to take those courses will be and why you want to be there. That's half the battle. 
That's perfect, Andy. Thank you. And um, while I have you, because you talked about, um, you know, the different ways of taking classes, and this was something that just came up for me. Um, in your presentation, you talked about the asynchronous, the synchronous, the in-person, et cetera. In this world of COVID, where most classes now are going um, online, what do you tell the person um, who really thrives better in an in-person environment? Should they well, basically stop and not do anything right now until we quote unquote go back to normal? Or should they try to push through like, what words of wisdom do we give people? Because I hear those concerns all the time. Uh, me too, without a doubt. Here's what I tell people. If your goal was to go back to school before COVID, that goal hasn't changed. It's still a need. It's still a pathway. It might be a little different. Now, just because you take classes online doesn't mean that you don't get one-on-one -on -one interaction with folks. So it's online is nothing more than a vehicle in which you're going to receive that information and that training. Um, so your classes could be exactly like this. Your instructor asks you a question and you are in time. The only difference is that you're looking at a computer screen instead of being in the room with them. The interaction is the same. Do students need to be agile and adjust during COVID? Oh yeah, sure. But so does higher education. But the point is, if this is your goal before I know when I went home, which was March 13th at 4 p.m., and I have not been back to my office since. So if your goal on March 12th, say, was to go back to school, nothing's changed for you. And it can happen. You can have one-on-one -on -one interaction. Online is just a vehicle for delivery and does not define the manner in which you learn. We can make that happen for you. If I get claps from Laura, my day, my, I'm done here. This is good. If I got a heads up from, from Morgan and Amy, my job here is done. I'll see y'all. <laughs> Look, so Andy's, Andy's dropping the mic on us. And, and, you know, and what that really reminds me of or, or brings to mind is the resilience that we have to have in this environment. But I think as women, we have resilience to be able to handle everything that life throws at us. Um, because we do wear so many different hats. So being resilient, Morgan, I'm going to hop into you um, because you had this great experiential exercise looking at the wheel of life and assessing all the different domains in our life. Um, Diane talked about she has a busted wheel. Um, and uh, can you speak more? Um, because, you know, I didn't do it while we were in there, but I'm sure I have some spokes that are sticking out. What do we do? How do we take that and make that practical to our lives so I'm not just shading in areas, but I'm actually using it a tool to help grow me? Yeah, there's a couple things. You might not like my answer. And I love that um, Laura brought up the muscle analogy because it, there's, there's such a parallel in like taking care of your body. Oh my gosh. And um, somebody's at the door. Taking care of your body and, and growing a business. I am so sorry, you guys. No, you know what? This is what happens when you are live and we are in a virtual reality and people are working from home and it's fine. This is real life. This is what happens. And this is Morgan being resilient at her best. She is pivoting and she is multitasking and it's all going to work out. And I know every one of us on here is totally in there with you, Morgan, going, oh, so thank sorry. God it wasn't me. <laughs> yeah, there was some guy standing at the door and I was like, not a good time. Not a good time. Okay. So you have to, you have to be willing to do the hard work, right? Like this whole COVID experience for me has been me, the however long, being so busy that I could just avoid my feelings. And then I was put in timeout on March 13th and like, told to feel things and I didn't feel things well. So we're all in this together in a different way, shape or form. And an example with the wheel of life, back to talking about Brayden for a year after I had him, I was not happy with my body and it wasn't, there was nothing wrong with me, but I just wasn't equipped to take care of myself, um, to like, to understand mindset. And I vividly remember it was like July 4th, 2016. And I woke up and I looked in the mirror and I was like, I'm just, I'm tired of feeling like this because me feeling so crappy was pouring over into my marriage and pouring over into how I felt as a mom and pouring it over into that shitty career that I had at the time. 
it was like a, a rippling effect, right? So that was the day that I woke up and I decided to take back my power and I got myself in the best shape of my life. And this analogy looks different for everybody, but you have to decide like, where is it really hurt? And what do I have to do to change it? And you have to do the hard thing and change it or grow or get better. But you know, there's no magic answer because if everybody, if there was, everybody would do it and we'd all be sipping mimosas with our feet up, but that's not life, right? So where can you do the hard work? The doorbell's like got me all worked up now. And how can you change it? And sometimes that's uncomfortable conversations. Sometimes that's actually having feelings. Sometimes that's changing something that we've done our entire lives. But it's just those little steps that we've heard today that snowball into massive momentum. That's fantastic. Thank you, Laura. Um, because it is, it's, it's often, I think almost all the speakers talked about, you start with one thing, you start small and you keep doing that thing over and over and over. And then you do the next thing and you keep doing those two things over and over. And then you do the third thing and it all builds up into change. It all creates momentum. It all keeps moving us in the direction, this new direction. And Laura is chomping at the beat. Hop in. I don't, you know, we're, we're, I'm like, how do I do this race? I'm going to literally raise my hand. You know, I think what Morgan just said is so important. And I want to add just one more thing on that. Remember that hard things can be temporary or they can be permanent. So it may be really hard and really big right now. And it feels so consuming. Like, I don't even know how, I don't know the first thing to do. I don't want to deal with those emotions that I have shoved in a shoebox underneath my bed and has collected cobwebs, but it can be hard to deal with that right now. And then you can thrive and succeed on the other side of it, or you can keep that hard thing internally forever. So really evaluate on your timeline of life. How long do you want to keep that hard thing with you? Are you willing to put in the time and the investment and the work that it requires right now to release it? Or do you want to have some version of that feeling for the rest of your life? Wow. Yeah. I'm with Andy over there because it's like, I think we all have hard things or have gone through those hard things. And what do we want to do with that? And so I love how you said that, Laura, that it's temporary if we're willing to actually walk through it and then thrive on the other side of it. Um, Amy, you gave us some great tools with your shameless living growth cycle. And you talked about, let's see, starting your day with intention. Can you talk to us more about that? Like, it's Monday morning, 6 a.m., my alarm goes off. What does it mean to start my day with intention? What does that look like? So when you start your day um, with intention, um, it really gives you the energy that you need to keep going. Um, and so for me, um, I was very intentional um, about, for, for me, getting up, um, maybe reading, you know, my Bible, you know, for me. Um, I had to be very intentional about what I did to keep me motivated, um, to keep me from self-sabotage, um, you know, that negative self-talk that we have in our heads, in our minds all the time. Um, you know, if we be intentional, you know, about speaking the affirmations, um, getting up for me, I needed um, that air. So I would get up in the morning, get up, get out and take a walk. I had to be intentional about that because that is what kept my mind sane, especially when I was really in the, the thick of the shame. Um, for me, going out, getting that fresh air, taking that walk, speaking the affirmations, um, you know, maybe I, I had a counselor as well. Um, that I was intentional about getting a counselor because for me, um, I knew that I didn't want to continue to live in the shame. I needed the shame to be behind me. So we really must be very t intentional about every decision that we make. Um, and, and so that's what I definitely suggest. Because, and also it's about shifting that mindset. When we shift that mindset, again, it's all about being intentional. So let's shift it because when we shift, we can then see ourselves. Thank you, Amy. That um, that actually does help. Oh, and Andy, hop in here. Just two seconds. You know what we haven't talked about, but I think it's implied, is the support system. It's okay. It's wonderful. We need that circle, um, that circle of people to go, okay, 
this is good, that could be better. You don't have to do this all by yourself and feel like you're in a silo where no one, no one is there to help you. This is what this growth is about. And everybody on this panel is part of my little circle. I think now I talk to Tina all the time and I'm like, I need to get up and work out. She's like, I got you. I've talked to Laura, I've talked to Morgan and Amy, I've just met you, but you are gonna be in my circle. Um, so I, I just you. feel as though we gotta talk about this support system because you don't have to do it alone. You don't have to do it by yourself. And you get to choose who your cheerleaders are. Find yourself a cheerleader, man. Well, if I can just jump in there and say something about that, um, Andy, that was very good because I also spoke about reengaging in your community. You know, and so what does it look like? Building the relationships. Like you said, who is your support system? That support system is huge. Now, for me, I had a huge support system when I was going through the thick of the shame. However, I chose to be secluded. I, clo I chose to seclude myself from family and friends until I was able to be well enough. Um, to just express what was happening with me, but you know build the relationships get back into the community You know join meetups, you know meetups and find what what's out there for you um, You know volunteer because when you volunteer you take the focus off of you and you're able to help other people To get over their shame or whatever it is grief pain that they're going through But you know volunteer because again it takes the focus off of you and allows you to be able to help others And when you help others trust me you do begin to feel better I think that is a perfect way to end this panel discussion. Um, just, you know, reminding us all that we have community, we have support to reach out, to give back. Um, and I just want to thank you ladies for um, being transparent and open and honest with us this morning and giving us your time. Um, I'm going to hand this back over to Tina because she's going to talk about the next series um, for the Women's Growth Workshop. Tina, why don't you take it away? So let me compose myself because y'all have me in tears because this is what it's about. The connection, the growth, the ability to be each other's assets. Everyone that is on this wonderful moment right now, you're here for a reason. Everything that you've heard today was because you were meant to hear it. And I'm in a, I'm a testament, I'm, I'm proof that that is the reality because each one of the women that you have gotten a chance to hear from today has impacted my life. And because I was where I was supposed to be, that's how I met them. And because they were where they needed to be, that's how they were put into my life and so on and so forth, the ripple effect. It is so imperative that we honor where we are in our lives. This is a career track and connection focused workshop. Yes, it's about professionalism. It's about growing your, your careers, your passion, your, your goal and your vision for where you wanna take your life professionally. But you can't do any of that if you don't do the hard work on yourself personally. So the next workshop that we have coming up is gonna dive into the emotions you're seeing on my face and the emotions that you're connecting with right now. It is our emotional self. It'll be our third pillar of strength. We have five of them that we're taking you through this year, all amping up to that amazing day that we are going to hopefully be able to in person see each other and hug. I want hugs for all of us, fingers crossed, toes and all. The emotional self is the next pillar of growth that you're gonna have an opportunity to step into and make some of those really hard decisions for yourself to step in and reconnect and maybe uncover for the first time in your life. I know a couple of our panelists made that, that analogy about having to look themselves in the mirror and go, I, I don't recognize that woman anymore. Maybe it was after baby, maybe it was after career, maybe it was after spouse, maybe it was just trauma, maybe it was something in life and you just, you lost yourself. But all of these pieces are a part of that wheel of our life. All of these pieces are part of who we are as the woman, the whole woman, the whole extraordinary experience that each of us gets to have the privilege to have in life and connect with each other doing so. So we hope that you will join us September 26 for the next workshop. Our ability to identify, sit with, and hold the space for the woman we are becoming every day 
is an emotional journey. One I look forward to taking with you, one I know that each of us looks forward to taking ourselves. We hope you will continue to grow with us and I'm gonna go ahead and hand it back to Jen so she can give you a little more information about some of the other opportunities that are ahead of you. Thanks, Tina. Um, not only do we have the Women's Growth Workshop coming in September, but we also have LeaderCast Women, which will be with us on August 30th. Um, and we are thrilled to be a part of this. Uh, the link um, for LeaderCast Women will be in the thank you email that is coming out if you'd like to register. And um, it was amazing last year being there in person. Uh, we can't be in person this year, so we will have um, a live um, speaker uh, to kick us off. We will also have um, a social networking um, virtual happy hour at the end. Um, and Abby Wambach, do I need to say more? Okay. So. Um, there's more information though in the thank you email that will be sent out to you. And if you click and register with that link, because you took part of um, our workshop this morning, you'll have $5 off. So please take advantage of that. Um, and I also just wanted to say in that thank you email, there is an evaluation as well. Please fill that out um, because we do use that to refine and grow. Um, where we started two months ago compared to where we are today has just grown leaps and bounds and that's not a diss at all on how we started this two months ago it's part of as andy said we have to be lifelong learners and we learn and we grow and we expand and um and so it's really exciting to see how this might look two months from now if we can be in person that would be ideal but if we need to be virtual we are, you know, I'm going to use Tina's phrase, we are being badasses in um, ups, upskilling ourselves in this. So please fill out the evaluation. Um, and uh, one of uh, Tina's going to just give a shout out to our sponsor. All right. So as you're seeing, I want to thank our sponsor. And gosh, I hope I get the wording in the order it's supposed to be in. The Oshkosh Corporation's Women's Network Access was absolutely pivotal in being able to bring this together. And I am so grateful to that organization and their intentional, purposeful, passionate willingness to dive in and help us make this possible. And Hagerstown Community College, I wanna thank you again from the deepest depths of my heart for partnering with me, for believing in me, and for allowing this to have such an incredible foundation to grow on. Um, thank you so much for that. And then Jen, I'm giving it back to you so you can go over the, the final nuts and bolts of pieces. So yep. go Sounds good. All right. So thank you all for coming today. Um, we have just been delighted to spend this time with you. I want to thank the presenters, um, all of our presenters. Um, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but I am going to say it, um, have donated their time and their talk to, um, to Tina and Fit Minded Living and Hagerstown Community College. Um, we were able to reduce things because of the economic downturn that um, our community at large is in and the nation. Um, and so I want to, I just want to recognize that um, people are giving freely of themselves and I want to say thank you very much. Uh, I also want to thank Ryan Edwards. He is the man behind the scenes who has really kept all of this technology going. Um, if it wasn't for Ryan, I don't know that we would be able to be doing what we are doing. Ryan is the one who um, recorded and edited all the videos. He uploaded everything. He makes this all seamless. He's on right now. Um, and so um, he, He's just phenomenal, and I want to make sure that we thank him. Um, <clears throat> and on behalf of HCC, I want to thank you all for coming and being with us today. And I can't wait to see you at the next workshops and at LeaderCast Women. And I'm going to let Tina close us out with some final remarks. 
Thank you again, Jen. I appreciate it. And Jenna as well. I know she may or may not be on here with us. She's celebrating her beautiful daughter's birthday this weekend. So in amongst all of that, we still, we pulled it off, friends. I am so grateful for each of you. And I promise to try and keep back my tears. Um, this is phenomenal and it is badass and it is incredible and extraordinary and all of the essential words that I can't possibly take long enough to think of and put out there. I want to thank each of the presenters this morning. I thank each of you for being here today as a participant, as a perpetual student of life, as a steward of our world. I thank all of you for being a part of this and for helping to grow a community that we need in our lives today, that we need in our communities, that we need to connect each other and to honor who we are as individuals and to honor who we are becoming on this beautiful journey. And I will say one other thing, Jen and Jenna, thank you for being partners, for being co-partner, co-pilots in this ride. I cannot wait to see where it takes us and I am elated for how it's happening in real time. And I know every moment of it is on purpose and it is meant to be. Ryan, if you can come on in person, I would love for you to take the bow that you deserve to take. If not, I get it, it's okay. But man, you are the wizard behind my curtain. Yay! Thank you all so much. There you are. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. We will see you at the next one. We hope you continue to grow with us. We love you. And please, please go out there and continue to be extraordinary.